One question I get asked a lot, more than anything, is between the two hardware devices that I make, OS RTT and OS LTT, which one should you buy? I thought that that was worth explaining, so here it goes. If you'd rather not find out the features of each and just want the Cliff Notes version, OS RTT is a monitor testing tool. It does respond times and monitor latency. If you want to test latency in games, on consoles, or with peripherals, you want OS LTT instead. OS RTT is a response time tool for monitors, OS LTT is a latency tool that works with loads of stuff. So that's the basics, but if you're willing to hang on here, I'd like to dive a bit deeper into what each of these things can do to help you understand which tool is right for you. I'll start with OS RTT, or the Open Source Response Time Tool. As the name suggests, this is an open source tool for testing monitor response types. This one specifically is OS RTT Pro, essentially the version 2 of my original tool, which swaps out the sensor package for one that I designed myself including a custom digital potentiometer that allows the tool to comfortably range from 80 to over a thousand nits and still get a good measurement. The primary use for this tool is testing monitors, and specifically testing their response times. It comes with full heat maps and an interactive raw data viewer to catch things like manufacturers faking adaptive sync support Something that I've done, I think, twice now. The OS RTT software also gives you full control over how you run your tests. You can use the default methodology that I use and prefer, or you can pick from a number of other standards, from the likes of hardware unboxed 3% of the RGB values tolerance, TFT centrals fixed RGB 10 offsets, or the outdated, outmoded VESA standard of 10% of the light level tolerance. You can also show the overshoots as a function of the light level or RGB values and as a percentage or not. Because it saves the raw data, everything is transparent. You can verify the results if something looks fishy, and if you're extra keen, you can even vet or modify the code itself. The other feature, latency testing, is incredibly useful too. It's specifically only for monitors, but it gives you the on-display latency, as in how long it takes from the newest frame leaving your graphics card to having the monitor start to display it. Anything where the average is around half the refresh rate is spot on, whereas if some results start to take longer than one frame, that's less good. It's a helpful tool when testing displays. As for the latency tool itself, well, this one is rather different. It retains the monitor testing mode as you might expect it to, but the addition of a microphone jack and a two-pin input makes this a lot more versatile for testing all sorts of devices for their latency. Let me run you through some of the options here. One of the most popular modes is testing keyboards and mice for their click or key press latency. You can do that either with the microphone, where it's essentially listening for you to hit a key or switch, or by using the two pin input soldered directly to the, the switch, whether that's in your keyboard, mouse, or kind of anything else really, that will give you a key press or click event. Both work well, although for high polling rate uh, peripherals like 8000 Hz type high polling rates, if you want the utmost in accuracy, you want to use the 2-pin option. I think the next most popular mode is the ability to test a game's latency. This uses the light sensor on the bottom and can either click the last left mouse button to trigger an action, or if the game you want to test doesn't have any good sources of light from a mouse click, say a racing game, you can just have it move the mouse. You want to either line up on a sharp edge, uh, sort of a dark or light area, and have a light or dark area beside that. Uh, you just need the light level change for it to work, and then hit go, and it will automatically run as many times as you like to get as accurate a result as it can. It's pretty handy. 
In a recent update, I also added the ability to pretest your system's latency so you can then isolate that from your game's latency. You can also test audio devices. This is one that I am still working on improving, so you'll have to bear with me, but it certainly can do that test right now and you get comparable, if somewhat imperfect, results right now. One mode I've just added is the ability to use the microphone as the trigger and then the light sensor as the data source. That is essentially a console testing mode. You just put the microphone close to the button you're going to hit and then with the sensor strapped to your display, hit the button and wait for that action to happen. Repeat as many times as you like, the more the better for accuracy's sake, and then hit the button on the device to end the test. Nice and simple. You've also got the option to hook a, the 2-pin input to basically anything you like that can output, ideally no more than 5 volts DC, although it is technically rated for up to 50 volts DC, and use that to trigger the light sensor. In future that will also include the uh, microphone as the sensor as well. OS LTT, as you might expect, has its own software. It has a much more modern look and a bit of a different way of interacting with it. All of the settings are right here for you to pick from, which I think makes the experience of using it pretty simple and easy. It still has a results viewer where all of your data will show up once you've ended the test, or where you can import existing results to view them or process them again. Much like the response time tool, all of the raw data gets saved as well as the process data so you can see exactly what's going on and vet the results yourself. Transparency is still the name of the game here. While there is plenty more that I could talk about with these tools, I think that's a good overview of what each of them do, and hopefully it's enough information for you to be able to decide which is right for you. As someone who reviews both monitors and peripherals, I'm incredibly happy to have both of these at my disposal. If you would like to get your hands on one, or both, of these tools, head to osrtt.com and check them out. I build each unit by hand right here at home, built to order, and ship them pretty much anywhere around the world. If all of that sounds interesting to you and you want to learn more, I've got a full playlist of the OSRTT and OSLTT videos that I've already done up on the channel, and I'll leave that on the end cards when they pop up. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this one and be uh, notified of the new tools that I'm definitely working on, then hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon as well. Also, if you don't fancy buying one of these tools but you want to support me in the development of them somewhat indirectly, you can use a load of the affiliate links in the description. They all help me out. Places like Amazon, Overclocks UK, and a load of other stuff, that's all linked in the description, as is osrtt.com if you do want to pick one of these or both of these up. Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments or jump on our Discord server and head to the osrtt-osltt support channel. And yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next one.